Hello everyone, I'm Forecaster Jackson and here to show you one of our new products here at weather.us, a severe weather composite map that we just added for the ECMWF and GFS models. Um, so how to get there, uh, as with all of our model data, you're going to go to the forecast tab, uh, select the ECMWF model. Um, for this, I'm going to select a custom zoom domain, which lets me click the map um, to select my own uh, domain instead of, you know, doing it by country uh, borders. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, here's a picture of the East Coast. I'm going to go to the parameters menu to select the composite. Um, scroll down, composite charts. I'm going to look at thunderstorm composite. Uh, I have a video on synoptic composite um, also up. Uh, you can find that link on blog.weather.us. Um, so we've selected that. Um, since there's not much in the way of severe weather going on right now, I'm going to jump forward to um, Sunday when we could see a little bit of severe weather um, in the mid-Atlantic. Um, so I just want to go over how to use this map um, to forecast severe weather. I'll be talking about this example, but you can apply this to any uh, severe weather forecast that you may encounter um, anywhere in the world. So uh, the shading here is CAPE, um, Convective Available Potential Energy. That's fuel for thunderstorms. So um, thunderstorms need fuel to develop and survive, and this is a measure of how much fuel is available for that. Uh, these wind vectors are um, basically wind vectors at different levels. Um, so if we zoom in, might be able to get a little bit of a better look here. Um, so these blue vectors are the winds at 300 millibars, um, so that's jet stream level. Uh, the green vectors are 500 millibars, so a little bit below that. Um, red vectors are 850 millibars, so that's starting to get into the 5,000 foot range. And then finally, the black vectors are 10 meter winds, so right near the surface. Um, if you are looking for severe weather, what you want is for these um, wind vectors to be veering with height. Um, so we have that set up right here um, in the mid-Atlantic forecast. Um, so you can see these southeasterly winds in the low levels. Uh, if you look just the black wind vectors, you're looking for southeasterly winds here. Uh, and then as you head up to the red vectors, those are more southerly. Uh, the green vectors southwesterly, and then the blue vectors are kind of west-southwesterly, and um, you also want the magnitude of the vector to be increasing with height, so that if you connected all these vectors, you get this kind of looping uh, curve off to the northeast. So um, ideally, if we were looking for a big severe weather day, we'd have a lot more um, energy available, but uh, this is late October, so you wouldn't be um, expecting a big severe weather day with lots of energy, but the wind profiles here, as you can see from these vectors, are very favorable for severe weather. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that. But you can use these, um, you can use this tool to forecast severe weather at any time, uh, anywhere across the globe. Uh, you can also use this vector composite to do a lot of other different things uh, in terms of forecasting other types of weather. Um, so. Uh, if you're looking for, you know, southeasterly winds aloft to transport in moisture, but northerly winds at the surface to transport in cold air for a winter weather event, you could use this vector map for that. Uh, there are lots of different uh, other applications. So uh, we hope you find this composite to be useful and hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. You can send uh, us a message on, on social media or drop a comment on the blog. Thanks for watching.